Hey everyone, Dr. Dan here. In this quick video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get C++ up and running on your Mac. And I think this is probably one of the quickest ways to do so. Now, I will say that this video essentially assumes that you have watched the previous video of how to create your first Java program. Now, you may not be interested in Java programs, but in that video, we downloaded and installed Eclipse in the Java JDK. Eclipse is a, one, a very popular integrated development environment. Um, and you can use that also for, in addition to Java, you can use it for C++. So I encourage you to check out that video. You'll see a link below um, where you can check that one out. Uh, but for this video, we're going to assume that you have Eclipse already installed and you're going to need to do two things. One, you're going to make sure that you have a C++ compiler installed on your Mac, as well as you're going to add a special tool to Eclipse. So the first thing I want to do is go, go ahead and go to my spotlight search and search for the terminal. And we're going to open up the terminal. And we're going to go ahead and see if we have GCC installed. So we'll say GCC, which is a, a very popular C++ compiler. And then we'll do dash dash version. Okay, and you can see what happens on my machine. It basically says, hey, um, didn't find it. It comes up with this. Do you want to install these things called Xcode uh, command line developer tools? Okay. Now, Essentially, what on a Mac, the, one of the, I mean, there's a number of ways you can get a C++ compiler, but typically what people do is they download something called Xcode, which is a, a Mac tool. The problem with Xcode is, is it's a huge tool. You actually can go to the, the uh, Apple Store and search for it here. And if you actually click on this and start to download it, you'll basically see it's like eight gigabytes. It's a huge download there to 7.8 gigabytes. Um, and the reason that it's so big is it has a ton. It has like a Android, or not Android, but a iPhone simulators and iPhone watch simulators and all kinds of stuff like that, right? Stuff that we don't need for simple C++ programs. All we really need is what is a small portion of this Xcode developer tools called the command line tools, which is basically what it's prompting me to install right now. Now, if you typed in GCC space dash dash version and it came up with some numbers, you know, 11 point something point something or whatever, then you're, you're in good shape. You can skip ahead. But if not, hopefully this install button came up for you. If it looks like it's not installed and not working, but that button didn't come up for you, then you can get it up by simply typing Xcode dash select space dash dash install. Okay. And one more time, if that doesn't work for you, it might ask you to be a, an administrator. You might have to type in sudo before there, and that'll basically ask you to type in your administrator password. Now I happen to be on the administrator account, and you probably are too if it's your own computer. So you can just do this xcode dash select space dash dash install. Go ahead and hit install. And this again is going to download all these command line tools uh, to be able to get me to uh, compile C++ code. So this will take a minute to install. So I'll give it a, I'll give the video a pause and we'll check back in as soon as it's done. All right, so now that uh, the Xcode developer tools have been installed, go ahead and click done. And you should be able to run that GCC command again. And this time you will see it gives us an error. It says CLang, which is actually a, another C++ compiler that Apple uses. All right, so we now have GCC installed. You can also do GCC with the space dash dash version, and that should come up with uh, some version information as you see right here. Okay, so we see we're using C++ version 11. All right, so uh, that confirms that our compiler is installed. So now what we wanna do is go ahead and open up Eclipse. Okay, again, if you don't have Eclipse, uh, you can go to eclipse.org, I believe it is, and download it. Um, you'll also need the Java JDK, or at least the Java JRE runtime environment. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just open up a workspace here. And um, by default, I can run Java code in Eclipse. Eclipse was essentially made for Java, so I can open up. I have some existing Hello World Java programs here. But with a little bit of retooling, Eclipse will work for a lot of different languages, including C++. And the way that we retool Eclipse to work for C++ is just uh, once you've opened up Eclipse, go up to the Help uh, menu and click on Eclipse Marketplace. And this usually takes a second or two to load. And when it does, you want to type into the Find bar 
CDT, and that stands for C Development Tools. So type in CDT and hit enter, and it should be the very first result that pops up. Clip C, C++, IDE, CDT, and whatever version. This will probably grab the most recent version based on your particular version of Eclipse. So go ahead and click install and just confirm to just download everything. It'll usually pop up with a little message box asking you to accept some terms. So go ahead and accept those and hit finish. And you'll see this will take a little bit of time down in the bottom right corner. It'll show your, your uh, progress and then you'll need to restart Eclipse for these changes to take effect. Okay, so once that loads, we will now have a new option in Eclipse to create a C++ project, which was not there before. Okay, so I'll close the welcome screen. And over here in my Project Explorer, doesn't matter if you have a Java project already there or not, you wanna right click in this white area or you can always go to File, New. And then I always just do project dot dot dot. And there should now be a C, C++ uh, folder. Now, um, I wanna be very clear that you wanna click the C++ project. Okay, don't do C slash C++ because that's a different thing. And if you saw probably what popped up here under new, it actually gave me that option. So you might've been tempted to click on that one. It's not the right one. Okay, you wanna make sure that it's C++ project. So go ahead and click next and let's give it a project name. So my first CPP project, okay? And I'm just going to do this Hello World C++ project. Actually, now I'm gonna do the empty project and we'll write our, our Hello World from scratch. And then over on the right-hand side, you should see this Mac OS X GCC. Okay, so if that's not there, sometimes you might need to uncheck and, and it, it will probably pop up. But you want the Mac uh, OS X GCC. Go ahead and click Finish. Okay, and then in my first CPP project, You'll see it just has this one little thing of includes over here. Right click on the CPP project itself and then click on new and then click on source file. Okay, so under source file, I'll just say my first CPP program dot CPP. And you have to make sure that you give it the extension. Uh, if you just leave it without an extension, it's not quite going to work right. So you wanna give it dot CPP. There's a number of extensions that you could technically give it, but .cpp is kind of one of the common ones for C++ file. Okay, so go ahead and click Finish, and that will generate a, a very small program with just a few comments in there. So what we're going to do is we're gonna write a very basic Hello World program. So I'm gonna type out pound include, and then in angle brackets, IO stream. Okay, and then on my next line, I'm gonna say using namespace standard. And then I'm going to type out int main open close parentheses, open close curly braces, C out less than less than hello C world with Dr. Dan. And then I'll do less than less than end L stands for end line. Okay, and that's actually all I need. So what I can do now is I can go up and you always wanna make sure you save it, but if I hit the build button, this little hammer, I have to actually compile this program. You can see it's actually not working um, because I need to save it first. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And then you'll see if I hit that hammer again to build it, hopefully this time you'll see, in fact, build finish, zero errors, zero warnings. So make sure that you actually click inside the file and then go ahead and click the play button. And then you'll see hello C++ world with Dr. Dan. Okay, now one other thing I wanna show you is that if I try to make a second program in this folder, let's say I right click on my first CPP uh, project, and I say new, and then I go to source file, and this time I say my second CPP program. Okay, and then I hit finish. I'll go ahead, well you can see I made a mistake there. I forgot to give it the appropriate .cpp name, so I'm gonna right click over here and go down to rename and then I can just type in .cpp there. Now let's say, um, you can see that the icon's a little out of date, so I just wanna close it and reopen it. That'll give me all the proper syntax highlighting. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy my code from the first program and paste it into the second one. And then I'm gonna say hello, 
C++ world with Dr. Dan, dot, 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 again. Okay, and I'll save that. Now you'll see if I try to run this, I'm going to get an error. Okay, it says, hey, there's some errors. I'm not gonna try the power through it. I'm gonna go click on the problems, and the error that I see is one duplicate symbol. Okay, and if I double click on it, it doesn't really tell me where that problem is, which is a little bit unfortunate, which is why I wanna tell you what the problem is, because you may try to create two programs in the same project. Essentially, in C++, you can only have one file that has a, an active main method in it. Okay, this is what tells the project where to start executing code. So if I have two mains like I do right here, I have one in my first CPP program and one in my second, you need to make sure that one of them is inactive. So in order to do that, I can basically just highlight everything and then right click and go to source and toggle comment. This is one of the easiest ways, okay? That way when I go to my second CPP program and I try to, to compile it, this time I can run it and you'll see hello C++ world with Dr. Dan again, okay? So hopefully that helps you get started with C++ in uh, the Mac uh, environment. Again, that uh, prevents you from having to go out and download the eight gigabyte Xcode. You only really need uh, the smaller Xcode uh, command line tools. I encourage you to check out if you're brand new to programming, I encourage you to check out my website, hellodrdan.com, where I basically take you through an intense course uh, which covers more or less, actually more than an entire year of programming in Java with a transition into C++ at the end. So if you're just trying to learn the, the basics and fundamentals and kind of getting into some mastery of programming from a from a perspective of skipping no steps and uh, not wanting to search the internet, scour the internet for videos, Hello Dr. Dan is the place to go for that. All right, so hope to see you again in another video. Thanks.